Greetings everyone, it's Alan, back again with I Dream of Indie to bring you another Gameplay Impressions video. Today we're taking a bit of a break from the Halloween festivities to take a look at Sands of Aura, an action RPG developed by Chasu Entertainment and published by Freedom Games. This game is billed as a dark fantasy, souls-like experience in an RPG shell. So, was my first impression that of a desert oasis? Or was Sands of Aura, like Anakin Skywalker said, dry course and gets everywhere? Let's take a look and find out. So this game is basically a cross between Dark Souls and a Diablo-style action RPG. You create your blank slate of a character and are whisked away to the caverns and catacombs beneath the town. You start out with just a rusty sword and three bells that heal you. The bells can be refreshed at the various checkpoints throughout the game or upon death, and it's up to you to find the various items, armored runes to power up your character. As you explore, you are introduced to controls of the game, which for what it's worth really didn't work for me and were kind of a detriment to this adventure. You can move with a controller or with the mouse and keyboard using the WASD keys, a special attack with the E key, and your rune blade ability with the R key and heal with Q. Dash and sprint were bound to the same key and the default for that one was shift. You attack with the left mouse button and parry with the right mouse. Your mouse also worked as your camera, which meant the slightest movement of the mouse would jostle your character around to the point where you were constantly fighting with the camera to reposition yourself, and in a game where you're trying to constantly counterattack enemies, that made things a bit difficult. So as you explore the underground caverns, you encounter a knight who is essentially your friend, as well as a priestess trying to salvage goods from the burned church above. Story and lore are given to you throughout character interactions, along with various glyphs, scrolls, and other items strewn throughout the area. From here, it's the standard affair of NPCs giving you quests, which open up deeper areas of the dungeon, boss fights, and so on. If you've played any action RPG in the last 20 years, then you're familiar with the formula, and it's one of those situations where you don't fix what's not broken. The formula works, so why change it? The controls, while not completely broken, were something that can and did kind of ruin the experience for me while I was playing. I split my time between the mouse and keyboard and a controller. The mouse and keyboard inputs and movement didn't really feel good to play with. The camera movement was mapped to the mouse by default when it caused tons of issues in combat. I found myself fighting with the camera and player movement to constantly reposition myself. On the controller, the camera was tied to the right analog stick, which felt less intrusive and more organic. With Sprint and Dash being tied to the same button, it just fell off, at least on the keyboard. While I do think a separate button for dodge rolling and sprinting would make more sense regardless of the control scheme for this game, dodging was far easier with the controller. Overall, this game, while historically a genre that runs smoothly with mouse and keyboard, was best designed to be utilized with a controller. Regardless of the input method I used, though, the commands often felt as though there was a bit of an input delay, and movement felt cumbersome and at times really sluggish especially in the heat of battle. While I definitely preferred to control over the keyboard and mouse, I honestly didn't enjoy getting into combat with either method. The visual design with Sands of Aura isn't inherently bad by any stretch, but it is one of those situations where your opinion is going to be entirely based on your preference. Graphically, this game is a mobile game, and there's no getting around that. If I took the character models and dropped them into something like Clash of Clans or any of those games, those models would fit right in. That being said, the visuals aren't terrible. For me, I kind of like that style from Clash of Clans and what we had here in this game. It just kind of has this certain charm to it for me. The backgrounds are nicely detailed, and outside of some lighting and shading issues, the visuals were inoffensive to me. Like, I get the caves are supposed to be dark and gritty, However, I'd like to be able to take in my surroundings a bit more. As far as sound design, the game makes out pretty well here. There were some noticeable moments where the sound effects sounded a bit muffled. However, this is an early access title, and I'm sure the game is going to get developed further and small issues like that will be tweaked. I thought the music was perfectly fine, the overall music worked really well to set the atmosphere, and the boss fight music had just the right amount of urgency and intensity. In the end though, we don't have a finished product here, so I'm not going to give it a full review like it is finished. From the short amount of time I spent on this one, I wasn't all that impressed. I did, however, see glimmers of potential with Sands of Aura, and if the controls are tweaked, then this might be something to look forward to. As it is now, the game is very rough around the edges, and if or once those edges are sanded down and the game gets a few coats of polish, I'd like to revisit it for a full review in the future. And with that, this is Alan signing off on behalf of I Dream of Indie, and I'll see you all very soon. Alright everybody, I want to take a moment to give a thank you and a special shout out to our Indie Warriors. Mitchell Hall, Bunny, Kevalo, Bill T, Christian Cruz, Chris Jackson, Nathan Moore, Peach, Adriana Amato, CJR, PSC, C Coil, Skeptism, 
Jen Rose, Jesse, CPM, Julian Kolbus, JRS the 8th, Raylan, and Marky Ming. And if you want to learn how to become an indie warrior, be sure to check out the description beneath the video.